G'day, Blade Dickheads, Vaping Bogan. Back again for another Ridgey Did review. Hope you're all doing wunderbar. I say that because we've got a bit of German engineering to have a squiz at today. Something new from Smoker Store. The new Taifun GT5. Have a look at this. Very fucking nice. Got a big honeycomb shroud around the tank. Holds six fucking mils, dickheads. I've got it sitting atop the uh, Vicious Ant Primo mod. This is a primo fucking setup, that's for sure. So the Taifun series has been around for many, many years. I have uh, recently had the uh, the GTX, which is like a kind of RDTA style uh, tank in the uh, the Taifun line, but I never had any of like the other Taifuns, you know, the the sort of flagship tank for Smoker Store, uh, the uh, Taifun V3, 4, and all the rest of it. People have uh, always raved about, and uh, I've never had one, so I'm pretty chuffed to uh, get this number. Number five, uh, big thanks, big shout out to uh, the Vaping Fossil little vape shop here in Australia. Uh, they do that really awesome tobacco line that I love and uh, they sent this along. And uh, it is a, a big single coil, a direct lung or restricted direct lung single coil. Um, I don't think it's really designed for uh, MTL. So I've got a uh, 0.24 ohm alien in here that I've been running at about 45 watts. Just fucking exquisite. The flavor is amazing and the airflow buttery fucking smooth. Obviously this is made in Germany, so the quality and uh, the, the craftsmanship and engineering and design on it is just really, really fucking good. We're gonna have a good squiz at all of the somewhat complicated design. It's not too complicated once you understand how it works, but there's a lot more going on here than your average RTA. So uh, yes, yeah, strap yourselves in, dickheads. It's gonna be a bit of a longer video. I'm gonna go through all of the features and then we're going to uh, do a little coil build and wicking tutorial for you as well. Before we get into any of that, yeah, we gotta have a bloody beer. Well, we got a big German tank, so I found myself a big German beer. I'm gonna do my best to pronounce this correctly. This is an Acht Schlenkerle Rauchbier Urbach. I've probably got that wrong. The Germans are hitting their keyboards as we speak. But uh, yeah, it's a, uh, a strong Bock beer, basically. So the brewery itself is Schlenkerle. It says on the back here, Acht Schlenkerle Raubier Urbock is the complex sibling of the classic uh, Marazen smoke beer. Exactly like the classic, all its barley malts are kilned and smoked by burning beechwood logs in the historic Schlenkerle fire maltings. Its higher smoke malt concentration and the longer maturation in the 14th century beer cellars underneath Bamberg creates a taste profile of most intense smokiness, beautifully balanced with deep malt sweetness. As one of the last traditionally made smoked beers, Acht Schlenkerle Rauchbier is a passenger in the art of taste. It's not super crazy, just six and a half fucking percent, and obviously it is brewed over in uh, Germany, in Bamberg. So uh, let's just fucking see how she bloody tastes. Let's drink a beer. Oh, there we go, dear kids. Big German beer and me big German Stein. That is smoky as fuck, like a bloody campfire in a glass. A fucking Prost. That's bloody good. Now, I've had this beer about five years ago. I had a look on the Untapped app. If you want to follow the beers that I drink, then uh, you can follow me on Untapped. It's an app for beer drinkers. You can see all the beers and what people rate them. So I have had this. I uh, had a look, and uh, yeah, it was about five years ago. 2017, I had it, and uh, yeah, it is, as I remember it, one of the smokiest fucking beers I think I've ever had. It is just full on malty smoke. <laughs> it really has a very strong smokiness. If you're not into sort of smoked flavors, if you don't like barbecue uh, and the smokiness of, uh, of say smoked meats, smoking these meats, then maybe this is not gonna be uh, for you. But if you do like that, good smoky flavor, then it's gonna give you golden, malty, a little bit of caramel and sort of molasses flavors with a heavy, smoke overtone. 
Yeah, it really reminds me of like a, a very peaty, you know, Scotch whiskey. You know, that real fucking uh, Scottish fucking, you know, proper peaty old school whiskey. It's got that sort of ashiness to it, the smoke and ash, along with a subtle sweetness, a maltiness, and as like I said, a bit of a, a kind of caramel, maybe dried fruit sort of flavor. It's very dark and rich, but not sweet and bitter like a stout. It's uh, more like a heavy brown ale with loads of smoky. It is um, bloody good though. Let's see what we can fucking pair this with. Well, if we've got a dark smoky beer, we got to have a fucking tobacco flavor. This one is from my own little line, little collab I did recently with Rebel. Rebel Bogan is what we've called it. And this is Plum Job, which is a red plum and amber tobacco flavor. It's not your traditional tobaccos. If you don't like tobaccos, I fucking challenge you to try this liquid because I reckon you'll probably like it. It's not heaps smoky, it's not heaps tobacco-y, it does have a nice sort of, sort of amber tobacco undertone, but the sweet plums is really what fucking gives you the uh, the deliciousness. I can feel it all the way down in my plums. I think the uh, the dark plum flavour will go quite well with this sort of darker beer, and obviously the tobacco and the smokiness, well, they're just going to go fucking hand in hand. We'll see, hey? Yeah, that works. That works really well. That, that works just fucking exactly how I wanted it to. The sweetness of the plums adds a, a nice sort of addition to it. The um, the smoke and the uh, the tobacco flavors, well, they just sort of, they go together kind of like a, a cigarette. Not that I want a cigarette, but tobacco and, and smoked beer, it's uh, very sort of uh, nostalgic. Yeah, the slight savoury undertones of the tobacco go really well with this beer, the maltiness with that sort of plum and tobacco, and the, the smokiness kind of chilled out a little bit with the, the sweetness of that liquid. That is just a, a lovely little round the fucking fire on a cold winter's night sort of pairing. Anyway, dickheads, enough waffling over the malts. Let's get down in the up and close. As I said, we're going to get into this thing. There's quite a bit to cover, so stick with me, and then we'll tell you whether it's any fucking good or not at the end. Let's have a sticky beat. All oh, fucking righty then. This is the packaging. Your Taifun or Taifun GT5 will come in. A nice little Pelican case on the back there. You'll see there's a little NFC, which means you uh, put that near your phone and uh, a user manual. Well, it has links to a bunch of stuff, but there's a user manual uh, connected to this NFC. It doesn't come with one in the box, and it's uh, pretty detailed, the little PDF that pops up, uh, and yours won't have this little... Uh, well, it might. If you get it from the Vaping Fossil, it'll have that sticker. Otherwise, it won't. Anyway, let's see what you get inside. Well, you got the tank, bag of spare O-rings, another bag of spare O-rings, and some grub screws, and a little Allen key, and a little warning card. But let's get into it. So, it's a fairly hefty tank. It's 25 millimeters in diameter. Now, hefty compared to your average RTA, but compared to a German RTA, it's kind of on the sort of smaller side. <laughs> the Germans like to go big on their RTAs, and uh, this one is kind of uh, compact for a German, but uh, pretty beefy compared to a lot of others you might be uh, familiar with. It does have a six milliliter capacity though, which is pretty fucking awesome. And for something that holds six mils of juice, it's actually not that fucking big. But uh, you got a um, 25 millimeter diameter at the base there and mostly everywhere else is a little bit of a widening on these little bits here, but 25 millimeters mostly. Up the top, you got a nice little uh, 510 drip tip. We'll just wiggle that out. Little uh, pressure fit drip tip there. Actually really like this drip tip. It's machined beautifully, and the shape is just super fucking comfortable. It's kind of like that sort of vase traditional style, but nice wide base to it. It's just a, a really, really comfy mouthpiece. Now, first bit of clever engineering is the fill port and kind of locking system. It's got a series of moving bits that will uh, allow you to open up certain parts of the tank. So at the moment, you've got this little O being shown here, and that means that you are open for vaping. All right, it's ready to vape. You can, uh, you can toot away, and you can also get the base off the deck, okay? If I twist this to my left, anti clockwise here a nice little satisfying click and you can see there's like a little zero with an X in it that means the juice flow is now closed off you can't get the deck out all right when that is closed off when the juice flow is closed you can't undo the base here and get the deck out but uh, your liquid is locked off which is very handy 
and uh, if you want to then twist it a little further, you can now fill it. All right, and the juice flow is still locked off. So you stick your nozzle in there and uh, just fill away. Some people don't like these. I actually quite like this system. It works really well on this tank and uh, you don't really have too much mess when you uh, twist it back again. You might just need to wipe off a little smidgen of liquid that uh, gets left on there, but mostly it is pretty clean. Now, if I want to uh, take the chimney off, I can take the chimney out from the tank. I can twist it a little further, but I need to have removed the deck first, okay? And to remove the deck, I need to twist it back over here to open for vaping. So we'll get the deck out in a second. Before we do that, let's just have a quick look at the airflow control ring because we've got a dual airflow system, nice wide open sort of cyclops style, and uh, you have got a little clicky kind of ball bearing. I don't know whether you'll be able to hear it, but I'll show you the ball bearings in a second. There's a Nice satisfying click on all these positions of the airflow. So that's open, that's closed, you can kind of hear it. So each position has a nice little ball bearing click. Now if I twist the AFC ring all the way closed and then just a little bit back, I can actually get the whole AFC ring off and you can see how the airflow gets in there and you can also see that lovely little ball bearing system on the inside of the ring and that's sort of working its way across these little indents on either side of the base so that's how you get that nice little ball bearing click and uh, this is also how you can get your airflow slots out so if you take your tweezers couple of little uh, needle nose ends, just stick it into the airflow slots, just pinch them together and out they come. Now these little uh, airflow chutes are uh, exactly the same as what is in the GTX, the Tayfun GTX. So if you've got a Tayfun GTX and you, uh, you know, bought some extra little inserts, different sizes, they do have some uh, various options available. You'll be pleased to know that these are compatible or cross compatible so you can uh, use the ones you've already got and uh, you can do, you can have airflow coming from just one side. They've got blanks, they've got smaller triple holes, they've got um, a single one millimeter and 1.5 millimeter um, holes in the chute. So depending on what you want, you can get aftermarket chutes. I think they should have included some more with the tank, but we'll get to that a bit later. But yeah, you can easily access these airflow chutes uh, midway through a tank and uh, without disrupting your coil or cotton, which is a pretty awesome little feature. So that's how you get to the, uh, the bits and pieces underneath. We'll have a quick look at the 510. You've got made in Germany, bit of branding on there, serial number and uh, a hybrid safe 510 pin. It's not super obvious because the pin is stainless steel and so is the threads but uh, if you look closely there you can see that the pin is sticking out from the, uh, the threading if you wanted to use this on a hybrid mechanical mod. Let's put this back on. We do have a little bit of branding just on the base here. Typhon GT5 but other than that, there's not really anything on the uh, the outside here. So we just sort of push this on and then twist it back again and it won't come off. So it only comes off in that very far position and then back a little bit, which is good. It's not going to come off on you uh, unnecessarily. All right, so we've shown you how the airflow control ring works. We kind of showed you how the fill port works. So let's have a look at the deck. We need to make sure that our uh, juice flow is open and we can fucking vape. And then we're going to grab the um, AFC ring now. We're going to twist it all the way anti-clockwise and it will just pop off with a little quarter turn. All right, just like that. Now, if I close that back on and if I was to change this to say, the juice flow being closed, I can't, I can't get the deck off, all right? The deck won't come off, all right? So make sure that your juice flow is open, anti-clockwise, quarter turn, and off comes the deck. Very, very simple. We'll come back to the deck in a fucking moment. I'll just quickly show you how you can take the chimney out. There's your chimney, very nice beautiful dome shape to it. Everything on this tank is just fucking stunningly machined, beautiful tolerances. You can see your juice in there or the inlet, little square there, 
That's where your juice is going to be coming through. So uh, if we wanted to take this chimney out, we now can. We've got our uh, positions up here, and if we twist it over to juice flow closed, then we've got uh, our fill port open, and if we keep going now, we can actually take out the whole top section like that. All right, you might find the O-ring kind of grips it a little bit, but you can take out the whole fucking chimney. So this top piece here is one big chunky solid bit of stainless steel. You can kind of see where your liquid's going to be coming in through here and then coming out in there and going into your tank. So that's one big solid piece. Got a little O-ring on there to seal around your juice flow. Got your markings and you got this uh, nice ball bearing here to kind of give it pressure. This is your, your tank section. Obviously our glass is housed within this uh, lovely honeycomb shroud. So if we wanted to get the glass out, you do need to undo one, two, three, four, five, six star screws. All right, so a little bit of a, of a challenge or a little bit of messing around to get the glass out. I've had no reason to, because you can clean on the inside of the glass and you can clean out here. So uh, unless you break it, I don't really think you need to get to the glass. But uh, if you wanted to, undo those six star screws and uh, you can then get your glass out. But we're not going to bother doing that today. So putting the chimney back into the glass section, you can see there's a little tab here and a little tab over here. You've got two tabs. They basically need to line up with the, um, the inlet on the top piece here. Okay, you can see that inlet there. So easy way I found to do it is this little O-ring around your uh, fill port needs to go to the right hand side of the outer hole, sort of roughly there, and then it just slides in, and now we can twist it back. We need to make sure that our juice flow is open when we go to put this back together. And if you're wondering how we put it back together or how we know where to line it up with the deck, uh, there is a tiny little indent just in here this little indent you see that guy that lines up with our hole or our o over here and that's how the deck goes back together so that's how you get your deck in and out easily line up that hole with the little indent as you can see there indent there very simple. All right, I think we've shown you how it goes together and comes apart easily. It's um, It seems complicated, but there's a system to all of it. There's sort of indicators and and um, and systems that um, you, you figure out and you know, and once you know them, it, it's actually pretty simple. So let's have a look at this uh, this deck. It is very reminiscent of the uh, the GTX. It's got the, uh, the shoot system. You've got your uh, single coil design, and it's definitely a, um, a direct lung, a restricted direct lung or a direct lung RTA. Uh, you could put some uh, shoots in there that make it more mouth to lung, but I really don't think it is designed at all for mouth to lung. I think it's very much a restricted direct lung and direct lung. So you've got three air holes with those stock shoots going sort of underneath and from an angle, so getting right where you want the airflow to get the flavor. You got a four terminal post design, which I love because it means it doesn't matter which way your coils are wrapped clockwise or anti-clockwise, you can slide them in. And they've got a nice little sort of circular cutout. So the wire leg will sit down in a little hook rather than just sliding out as you clamp down with those uh, grub screws. You've got a, a pretty decent size on those grub screws, 1.3 millimeters. So they're not gonna round out on you uh, with your Allen key wrench and uh, your wicking is going to go down into these very generous juice wells. And this is why I think it's very much designed for direct lung is because these are not mouth to lung juice ports. These are very substantial and I've been running mine at uh, very decent wattages and uh, getting beautiful saturation, no fucking dry hit. So yeah, make sure you put enough cotton in there. I'm going to show you how to wick it shortly. Uh, also going to show you how to put a coil in it. I'm going to put the coil that I've been using back in. But yeah, the deck is um, pretty simple. I've kind of explained how those shoots work. We can pull those out from the bottom. You can have your build in there. You can have your cotton in there. And you can change out those uh, airflow shoots on the fly if you needed to. But um, yeah, the deck itself, the post design, you know, not super new. We've seen it before, but a very functional. I love a four terminal, two post design, post on either side with uh, two terminals on either side. 
just really easy. Doesn't matter which way your coils have been wrapped. Yeah, cunts, don't think there's much more to it. It seems like a lot. It's very German. It's very over-engineered. Well, not over-engineered. It's, it's just highly engineered, I think is probably the word. It's highly engineered. There's lots of um, cool little tricks and um, clever bits of engineering, but there is a little bit more to figure out and remember than your average RTA. So uh, let's have a look at the coil that I have been using. This little number from Breeze Tones, the Tricor Alien, three strands of 27 gauge wrapped in 36 gauge, all nichrome 80. It's a three millimeter inner diameter and a single coil for me came out bang on that 0.24 ohms, which has just been perfect for this RTA. Really, really love the flavor I've been getting off this thing. Three millimeter inner diameter, I think, would be recommended. You can go at 2.5, but you're going to need to leave all of your cotton. I wouldn't thin it out at all if you're doing 2.5s because those wicking ports are very generous. So having a three millimeter ID coil gave me plenty of cotton to fill those ports up. I'll show you what I mean when we do that shortly. But uh, yeah, it's a beautiful single coil direct lung vape off of this guy. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, chuck him back in there and then uh, throw a bit of cotton in. fucking go that's how i've been doing it not really thinning out the cotton at all just a little bit of a fluff a little bit of a fluff not really combing any of the cotton out of it not thinning it out because you got pretty deep juice channels they're, they're quite deep they go well past the hole here all right so i kind of want to fill up the um the area past the inlet so that you don't have it sort of pulling under there and then getting underneath the cotton and into the uh, the middle there so uh, cut your cotton basically in line with the edge of the tank. Cut it about here, all right, sort of sticking straight out, cut it there, and you'll end up with enough length, and then basically stuff it in. Um, make sure that you don't leave any little gaps, and you should be good. Very easy to coil, and very easy to fucking wick. A piece of bloody piss. And that's fucking that for the up and close dickheads. Let's jump back up top, talk pros, cons, prices. So there you go, cunts. There's quite a lot going on, as you can see. But I think once you get your head around how the sort of system works, it's uh, it's pretty clever and it's relatively simple. It does a lot. There's a lot of features to it. But I think it's really clever. I think what they've done here is uh, is pretty fucking uh, sort of smart. Let's talk about the pros and the cons, though. What do I like? What do I fucking dislike? Well, let's start with the performance because it is exceptional. The flavor is fucking fantastic. About as good as... I I think you're going to get out of a single coil uh, RTA, direct lung RTA. I can't think of a single coil RTA that's better than this. There are definitely some that are pretty close, maybe around the mark, but for something that holds six mils, you've got to take that into account. It's fucking, it's tall, and that's going to affect the flavor on most RTAs. But this doesn't. The flavor is just, it's like I'm vaping a, a little kind of flavor banger three mil, two mil RTA that's really short and the you know drip tip and everything's close to your coil. This is big. It holds six mils of liquid, and the flavor is like a fucking little tiny flavor banger RTA. It, it's fucking awesome. Just the best flavor I've had out of something this big uh, in the single coil category. It wicks like a fucking wet dream. It is just awesome. I've had no dry hits, but I've also had no leaking. If you wick it like I've just uh, showed you there, I don't think you'll have a problem. I'm using a 70-30 blend here, so you might need to be different if you are uh, you know, doing a thinner juice. But with 70-30, wick it like I did. I've had no leaks, no problems, uh, and I've had no dry hits. It's just a beautifully saturated vape. 
The airflow is really nice and smooth. You've got that honeycomb design with the sort of three chutes, uh, and it just gives you a beautiful drag. Um, you've got the option there to adjust the airflow on the outside, but you can then also get the, the little chute separately if you want to really kind of dial in your airflow underneath the coil. So it's quite, uh, quite versatile in terms of um, giving you the options to either control it on uh, the AFC ring or via the chutes. Uh, and it is just beautifully fucking smooth, as I said. Six mils of capacity I've already mentioned, but that is a huge fucking pro. It keeps you going a lot longer than most tanks out there. So for something that is, uh, you know, not massive, it, it's big, it's, it's a reasonably tall tank, but 25 millimeters, it's not crazy wide. To give you six mils of capacity is definitely a fucking thumbs up. The Craftsmanship, it is German made and that really fucking shows. It is really, really well put together. All of the tolerances are spot on. Everything fits together the way it should if you're, you know, putting it together correctly uh, just really really well polished and, and finished there's not a fucking blem uh, anywhere so yeah very very good what you would expect from uh, something made over in Germany personally I quite like the fill port it's not going to be maybe to everybody's sort of taste but uh, I find it to be pretty mess free you might get a little bit of liquid just around the hole once you've uh, taken your nozzle out but a little wipe with your finger and uh, it is all clean. I just find it very simple. I like it because you don't have to unscrew a cap and hold it in your hand or put it down on something while you're filling. You can hold your mod and your tank in one hand and juice bottle in the other and you don't have to uh, then screw a cap back on or put it somewhere. So I like that little uh, twist system with the uh, hole exposed. Juice flow control, obviously a big pro. Uh, I love the way that you can get to the deck with the, the simple quarter turn. Once you know what you've got to have open, to get to the deck. It comes apart really easily for cleaning. Again, once you know how it sort of all fits together, it's very simple to take apart, break down, wash it all out. Uh, obviously, you do have to uh, get some screws out to get the glass out, but you don't really need that just to uh, generally clean it. I'm always a fan of a clicky AFC ring. You know, I did it on the ether because I like that little ball bearing click system. There's just something therapeutic about having a, a ball click um, system on the airflow. You don't need it necessarily, but it does keep the airflow sort of where you uh, want it. And uh, it is a satisfying sort of feeling when you, uh, when you turn that ball bearing and you feel that little click. Aesthetically, I think it looks awesome. I like this honeycomb design they've got on the outside. I really like the, the look and the feel of the drip tip. And uh, it is gonna be reasonably durable compared to a fully exposed glass tank. You uh, obviously need to still be careful with it. It is glass, but uh, you know it's gonna give you just an extra layer of protection should it fall over. Um, you've got that outer sheath around the glass. Definitely a fucking thumbs up from me. In terms of building it and wicking it, it's not all that different to a lot of other RTAs that we've seen. You've got a four terminal system there, so it doesn't matter whether your coils are clockwise or anti-clockwise, they just sit in there really nicely and uh, wicking it. You wanna go sort of a little bit heavier on the cotton than you might think because it has got large juice flow ports there. But as long as you keep your wicks long enough, like I showed you, you shouldn't have any issues with leaking. And also I like the fact that uh, you can get to your deck without having to uh, you know, drain the tank or anything like that. Being able to lock off the juice flow is is definitely a pro. It automatically does it when you go to fill it, which is really fucking intuitive, but also handy if you're going on an aeroplane, you don't have to uh, worry about the cabin pressure forcing all your juice into your deck. So as you can see, plenty of shit that I fucking like about it. What do I dislike? Well, the first thing that comes to mind would be the fact that it's very expensive. We'll get to that fucking shortly, but you only get one set of airflow chutes. I think given the price tag with this thing, you should get at least a, a couple of pairs, at least give us a, a, another pair option, maybe more. More, uh, just given that they're not a huge piece of fucking metal and uh, you're paying a lot of money for this tank I really think that it's a, a bit fucking cheap that they haven't included uh, any extra or alternative airflow chutes. Now it is quite complex. Some would say that it's maybe over-engineered. I personally like the way that this sort of all works, but uh, yeah, taking it apart, a little bit more tricky. Once you get your head around it, you'll be all right, but yeah, it's not simple. Also the fact that if you want to get the glass out, you're going to have to get a, uh, a little star tool and uh, undo six screws. So not convenient changing the glass out. And obviously they don't include a star tool 
which is um, kind of <laughs> a bit crazy. If you want people to be able to get the, uh, the glass out, they're gonna have to have their own tool handy. So that seems uh, a little bit daft that they didn't include a star tool for those that uh, maybe need to get that glass out. It is quite large, bear that in mind. Not big when you compare it to other German RTAs, but when you put it side by side with uh, a lot of other sort of uh, options, it's uh, a fairly tall tank. So uh, that might be a con for some, not really an issue for me, but something I'll point out. And the last little thing, it's a bit of a nitpick. It's not really uh, something I care too much about, but over time, you may notice you get a little bit of weeping from the seam between the top of the tank and the deck, because there is just not much. It, you, you won't be able to see it on camera, but there is the tiniest little bit of movement uh, because it is a, a sort of quick turn system to get the deck away from the tank, there's no threads there. There's just a little bit of movement between the top and the bottom, and over time that allows just a tiny bit of weepage. Uh, it's not really something that I noticed for maybe a week, uh, but yeah, it is something that may happen um, if you uh, are taking the deck in and out sort of more frequently, you get a little bit of seepage kind of coming out there. You might need to wipe away, but it's not leaky. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's not leaky or anything like that. Just a little bit of condensation, essentially, I think, that just gets uh, underneath the AFC ring and kind of wiggles its way out between the, um, the ring and the top of the tank. But I'm really nitpicking there. It's not something that I give two shits about because it is so minuscule and it doesn't happen uh, immediately. No fucking deal breakers there, but let's talk about the price because that might be a deal breaker for some people. It is made in Germany and so like all of the stuff that's made there, it's a premium product, but this is kind of on the very higher end of the uh, price tags for premium RTAs. You're looking at 200 fucking euros. Uh, that's a lot of fucking money. And like I said, I think for that kind of money, you should be getting some extra airflow shoots. But uh, look, if you're into this sort of stuff, then it's in your budget. If you're not so much into the uh, very premium European made stuff, then uh, yeah, probably gonna be a little bit fucking shocking. 200 euros is certainly one of the most expensive RTAs I've ever come across. Uh, you can pick them up here in Australia from uh, the same guys that sent me this one, Vaping Fossil. Uh, you're looking at 275 Aussie dollars, obviously our exchange rate, not particularly good. So yeah, it's a lot of dollary dues, dickheads. Is it worth it? If you're into this sort of stuff, if you really like a, a, a very cleverly engineered um, sort of um, product, something that is doing stuff that other RTAs don't do, it's definitely built better than um, most other tanks out there, and it has uh, a really, really, really good fucking uh, performance. The flavor is fucking amazing. So uh, yeah, look, if that sort of stuff matters to you, then yeah, it's worth the money. But if you just want something that works well, and it's going to give you pretty decent sort of performance, you're not too fussed about some of those other features, then yeah, it might be a little bit fucking too much for your liking. But I'll leave it there, cunts. I'll put the usual Instagram and Facebook links down in the description if you want to check out what this Muppet gets up to outside the YouTube videos. If you want to support my channel, please do. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button. But if you really want to keep me doing my thing, then think about hitting some of my support links. As I say every video, this is an independent channel, which means nobody pays me to do reviews. Nobody sponsors this channel. I don't do that sneaky jump in the queue fee. I want to make sure you're getting a truly unbiased opinion on the shit I'm talking about. But to keep that up, a bit of public support is how I pay the bills. Hit my Patreon page, a special content. I do a vlog on there once a week you won't see here on YouTube, as well as you get access to my little art community. We have a Facebook group and Zoom room we'll hang out in. And those fuckers keep me behind the lens. So bloody cheers. But if you can't, that's all good. Sit back, sub on me fucking dicks off, or your bloody tits off. I couldn't give a shit what it is you're vaping on, whether it's a 200 euro fucking fancy German made tank or something that costs you 20 bucks out of China. As long as you're not banging the bloody bungers, that's all that matters. Cheers for tuning in. Cheery fucking oh. Go to uh, a PFD, P PDF, PFD. It's not a personal flotation device, you dickhead. Uh, everything you need so uh plenty plenty fuck me